Hello and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the hearts to encourage and equip you in your own personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resources, why don't you visit teawithtest.com or connect with me on Instagram, Tessiana. Good morning and welcome back. It is Wednesday. I know you're all super excited <laughs> that it's Wednesday. We are that much closer to the end of the week. And that much closer towards a year end and Christmas. And so I'm choosing to embrace all of the things that are happening and going on around me despite some of the craziness. Hello, Debs Osborne. Nice to see you live. So good that you've taken this little moment for yourself. Hello, Cans. Hope you're enjoying your Devo that you won. So good. Hello, Jill. All the way from Scotland. Hope you girls enjoyed Caitlin last week. She really brought such a beautiful, timely message, I feel. Hello, Nix. He made it. Good job. I love it when people um, carve out these little moments in time just to invest in themselves. You're doing a good thing showing up here. Saying to God, I'm here for it. I got something in my heart to share with you. It's just such a beautiful um, moment in time to be able to really do some deep work amidst the busyness of the year in. So I'm excited. So let me know, where are you? What are you doing? How is life? Hello, Tones. Little running extraordinaire. Watching you hopping around Belito there. It's very inspiring. Elisma, hello. It's lovely to have you with us. I don't know if we've met, but I would love to try and picture your face. I might have to click on your profile afterwards. <laughs> when I see a new name, I often have to try and figure out where everyone is. Hello, Yannicka. Welcome. So good to have you girls online with me this morning. I'm very much here for it and ready to go. Oh, amazing. Welcome from the South Coast. So good to have you with us. Love welcoming girls from all over the place to this platform. It's a special, special time that we get to have together. Short, short and sweet, but good nonetheless. I bought an Annie Bearing Fields house. Oh wow, that's amazing. Okay, this is like the craziest small world. We love Annie. Annie from the Netherlands, who used to be here on the North Coast and is now living with her family overseas. So good to have you with us and I'm excited for what we're going to talk about this morning. So if you're just jumping on, I'd love you to comment and say hi because then I can see your name and your face and it helps me to picture the crowd that I'm perhaps talking to. Hello Marlene. Um, I love, I, lo I know that I'm looking at, at a camera but I love taking a moment to picture the room as if we were sitting in a room together and try and picture your faces amidst the crowd and it just makes it a lot more personal and um, I feel a bit more connected to you when I do that so it's important to me that you comment and say hi because then I can see your name and I can picture your face and I think it contributes to the whole experience when you know that I know that you're there. Debs, I'm so glad you're here. Guys, if you don't know, Debbie Osborne is a beautiful prayer warrior honest human grateful to have you in my life Debs. um hello lauren from urban life so good to see you from joburg i hope that you are well you and your little babs so girls let's not waste too much time because i know that time is such a precious commodity for us and these these last few minutes of the year and I know that um, you have taken a moment to be here this morning because you value yourself, you value the word and you believe in gathering 
And so I think that's amazing. And I know that God will honor you for showing up. And so I don't want to waste your time. I want to jump straight in and hopefully give you, give you a little thought to take into your week. We're continuing our series on ordering your private world. Where, we do, where we're talking about what it looks like, like to find order within ourselves and so that we're not shaped and conformed and tossed around by, by what's happening externally because this is what I know to be true when your inner world is ordered what's happening on the outside is irrelevant actually it has no claim on us and so I shared a few weeks ago or well, two weeks ago that I had gone on this journey of picking up this old book well this is actually the revised newer version it's got the bible study at the back but i was given this book 10 years ago and it was on my shelf this like worn beautiful um old copy of gordon mcdonald's book and i must have lent it to someone because i can't find that beautiful old worn copy anymore um and so that's why i had to purchase the new one but a few weeks ago i felt like um my world was unraveling to an extent that i couldn't perhaps cope with and there are a lot of things that seemed out of kilter and I really asked God um, the scripture that's been impressed upon my heart for the season is from James 1 where it says if any of you lack wisdom ask God and he will give it to you just ask him and so in that in that moment of feeling completely you know wrung out and spent and dry and all the things I cried out to God and said God I lack wisdom for this moment I don't know what's going on with me I'm feeling exhausted. There's just so much being pulled from me in the season. What do, what do you want me to do? And I, I felt prompted to pick up this book. So I went to look for it on my shelf and couldn't find it. So I ended up having to order the new one. But started going on this journey of remembering the process that I went through 10 years ago of ordering my private world. And really felt God begin to speak to me even now of that process and how perhaps things have become a bit disordered within my soul. And so what's happening is what is I am feeling, I am burnt out and I am feeling exhausted and I'm feeling like there's a breakdown perhaps on the way. But that's not because of just this one moment, that's because there's disorder within myself. And, and the Holy Spirit in such a kind way is helping me now put things in place to bring back order so that I'm not governed and defined by my external world. And so we've looked at, you know, Caitlin unpacked the, what peace is. She looked at the idea of peace last week and I thought that was just such a beautiful um, uh, contribution to what we're talking about. And then in the first week we spoke about um, just just really uh, what the what the inner world and the outer world are and how we have a public world that's a world that everyone sees and we have this private world it's our inner space it's our it's very spiritual in nature and so we just unpack the differences between those two spaces and the importance of really placing emphasis on tending our inner tending to our inner world's needs and not ignoring it because it's a little bit more silent than the demands of our outer world and so I want to continue this morning and read you a little story. So bear with me. Don't don't go away now. It's really good. And you are going to be um, ministered to, I do believe. So let's get stuck in. I want to read you a story. A friend was once an officer aboard a United States Navy nuclear submarine. He related to me an experience that happened one day while the sub was on duty in the Mediterranean. Many ships were passing overhead on the surface and the submarine was forced to make a large number of violent maneuvers to avoid possible collisions. In the absence of the captain, my friend was the duty officer and he was in charge of giving the commands by which the submarine was positioned at each moment. Because there was such a sudden and unusual amount of movement, the captain, who had been in his own quarters, suddenly appeared on the bridge asking, is everything all right? I just wanna say, you know, we have this captain, his name is Jesus, and sometimes life begins to move us to and fro, and it feels like we're making, having to make these crazy pivots and shifts and maneuvers, and we have this captain, Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, who comes to stand on the bridge of our inner world and ask us, is everyone, is, is everything all right? And I love that. I feel that that's what God did for me in a moment a few weeks ago where I was feeling so undone. He took a moment to step into the bridge, step out onto the bridge as he saw me being tossed to and fro and he asked gently, is everything all right? He's so kind like that. Let's go on with the story. 
Yes, sir, my, friends, my friend replied. The captain took a quick look around and then started back out through the hatch to leave the bridge. As he disappeared, he said, it looks all right to me too. With just a few words and an abrupt exit, the captain conveyed his unqualified confidence in the duty officer's leadership. That simple routine encounter between a naval commander and one of his trusted officers provided me with a helpful picture of the order of one's private world. All around that submarine, the potential danger of collision was lurking. It was enough to make any alert captain show concern, but that danger was outside. Down deep inside the sub was a quiet place where there would, could be absolute control of the ship's destiny. And that was where the captain was ex instinctively headed. Okay. I love the picture of a captain. A captain. Who when things are being tossed to and fro is not found on the outside blurting orders and freaking out. He retreats to the inner world because he knows that that is what needs governance, that is what needs his attention. And if that is strong, what happens on the outside is irrelevant. When things are, on, are in order inside, when things are secure, then the external circumstances don't have such a firm grip and hold on our reality. When things are disorganized and disordered in our inner world, the accidents that occur have names, the accidents in our lives that occur have names like burnout, break up, breakdown, and blow up. Okay, do we say that again? When things are disorganized and disordered in our inner world, that is where we will find accidents occurring in our lives that look like burnout, breakdown, and blow up. Up. But when things are ordered on the inside, things are secure no matter what is happening externally. So that is what I'm trying to get hold of, get get through to you today is the importance of retreating to the inner world and tending what is there to make sure that it's strong and secure because if all is well internally, it doesn't matter what is happening um, in the external. And I really believe, you know, girls, this season has caused us to face ourselves. We've been asked to face ourselves, sometimes repetitively, and ask ourselves difficult questions. This book has been one of the catalysts to me asking difficult questions to myself. But there have been other moments throughout these two years where I have felt prompted to ask questions that have come through a, a preach or perhaps even been dropped into my spirit. We've been, we've been forced to ask ourselves the question, is there anything of substance in here? What's of substance inside? Because if there is substance on the inside, we will be sustained through difficult external circumstances. And that is what Gordon MacDonald is trying to get through to us as he tells that sterile story of the submarine. The captain could confidently walk away and know that things would be okay because what was happening on the inside was strong, secure, and firm. It is one thing for a person to make a mistake or even to fail. We learn our best lessons of procedure and character under such conditions, but it is another thing to watch human beings disintegrate before our very eyes because there were no resources of interior support in the midst of pressure. When I talk about substance on the inside, I'm talking about the resources that we can draw from when we are found within seasons of pressure. The reality is that I found myself over the last years in some difficult moments, but I did have reserves to draw from because in good seasons, seasons on what they call the mountaintop seasons, I was able to build things into my life. And so now when it's been a little bit harder, I can dig deep and draw from some of those reserves. And that's why it's so important to tend to our inner world because we don't know what's around the corner. And oftentimes, too often in the past, I've neglected my inner world, focused on what's happening publicly, and I'm not putting in what's needed so that I can draw from it in time to come. And so we need, we've been needed to, we've been, I think we've needed to ask the question, what 
what is of substance within me? Is there something of substance within me? Have we stored up something in the barn of our souls in the better days so that in the times of famine and drought, we don't perish? Have we done that? And so I wanna to say to you this morning, if you're in a space where you're like, things are so good, I am on top of the world, I feel full of energy, I have, I have accessed faith for this season, I know what's in front of me and I'm gonna go after it. If you're feeling like that, I wanna to say to you, now is the time to build into your soul, to, to build something so that there are reserves there for when things perhaps change. And if you're finding yourself maybe a little bit like me, like you know, you've perhaps not tended to the things of your inner world over the last few months and now you find yourself a little bit burned down, burnt out or broken down, now is the time to put into your soul. There is never a time where we should not be um, looking at what's inside of us and bringing order to the state of our inner world. And how do we do this? Gordon MacDonald has some amazing insight and I wanted to just share, you know, these are some of his thoughts, but I, and I've shared this with you before, so I don't want to go on and on about the same things, but I do, I do want to talk about the scripture. It's, in, it's Proverbs 4 verse 23, and you've heard me speak about it before. It's guard your heart for from it all of life flows. Guard your heart for from it flows the wellsprings of life. Now, our inner world is our heart and soul. And it is the most crucial and important part of us. And so Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, repetitively calls us to tend to the things of the heart. And you know, when I, when I cried out to God and asked for wisdom, and he led me again to a book that so helped me in the past, what he was actually reminding me was go and tend to the things of your heart. Perhaps this can be your guidebook. Perhaps this can be the catalyst. Perhaps this can lead you on that journey. But you know, Tess, that wisdom in and out of season is guard your heart. And so I've been revisiting this idea of guard your heart. What does it mean to guard my heart? I don't know. You know, I've lost my way a little bit. I need to remember. I need to remind myself of what I already know to be true. So I've drawn from the reserve of truth within my heart that I know is there. And I want to remind you that what it looks like to guard your heart is to protect and maintain the state of your inner world. To protect it. What are you putting into your heart? What are you watching? What are you, what are you allowing inside? What are you listening to? What conversations are you a part of? What company are you keeping? Are these things protecting the most precious part of you? If not, I would suggest we should ruthlessly eliminate these things. Amen? So in one sense, to guard our hearts is to mean to literally protect them. Not to build up a big wall where we don't allow people in and we like, you know, it's that self-preservation. That is not the protection that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the protection that comes by the power of Jesus Christ, where we stand firm and we know the things that cause our hearts to stumble and so we do not allow them access. Guarding your heart also means to maintain it. Now, I don't know about you, but we have a house, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but like most of us, we have a house, and I, I don't know about you, but I find houses to be exhausting in their consistent need of maintenance, honestly. If it's not a crack in the wall, it's a light bulb, bulb going, it's a tree that needs cutting down, it's a deck that needs to be maintained, it's, it's something that needs to be fixed, and it's like a never-ending pit of work. And to be honest, we are those people that tend to leave that kind of maintenance to November every year. <laughs> and you would think that by now, in our adulthood, we would choose a different way. But we, we tend to not. We tend to go about the year and everything's awesome. And then come November, we're like, eek, we need to fix this house. And that is not the way, that is not the way that you and I need to be looking after our hearts. When we leave things to break down over time and then we suddenly do this maintenance overhaul. It's, it should be a consistent daily 
moment by moment intentional practice of maintenance on our hearts. If I was clever, I would change a light bulb every time it broke. If I was truly intentional, I would make sure the trees were clipped and cut down regularly. If I was um, smart, I would make sure that if a deck plank came unhinged, perhaps I would put it together in that moment, you know, or find someone who could help me. But no, I don't tend to do that with my house. And the truth is, I think most of us live that way with our hearts. We leave them to kind of break down over time. And then suddenly there's this huge maintenance project that's necessary. And it was actually avoidable. And so I want to encourage you to ask yourself, what does it look like for you to guard your heart? Because it's going to look different for you than it is for me, but it's crucial that we do these things. It's crucial that we pay attention to the most important part of us. It's the most, it's the most intimate, spiritual part of who we are. It's the part that God looks at. It's the thing that he pays attention to. He's not looking at how glowy my skin is or the color of my hair or if my eyes are sparkling or what clothes I'm wearing. God cares for none of that. He, he cares about the things I care about. You know, I don't think God looks at me and goes, Oh, Tess, look at you struggling with aging. That's so, uh, you know, petty and surface level in its foundation. I think God cares about the fact that I don't want to age because he loves me. I'm his child. But the reality is I'm going to have to face that at some point anyway. But the truth of the matter is he's not concerned about my external appearance. He's looking at my heart, the state of my heart. And he's, he's empowered me as a human being by the power of his Holy Spirit to maintain and protect what's most precious to him, my heart. And so I want to take us to a scripture, actually. It's in Romans 2. And you'll have heard this scripture many times. It's not like this... Um, this is the first time you will have heard it. But I want to read it to you and I want us to just to go there together and just remind ourselves of the beautiful role that we play in this process. That we're not, we don't sit idly by. You know, we have a role to play and God entrusts that to us because one, he loves us. And two, he knows that when we have his spirit, we are empowered human beings. We can do hard and holy things. And so... Romans 12 verse 2 says this, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. A man by the name of J.B. Phillips, his version of this verse is, Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. Don't allow the world to squeeze you into something you were not created to be. Do not be conformed. Do not be conformed by the outer world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your heart, your soul, all of the things that make up that innermost part of you. We're directed by Paul, a beautiful and profound scholar, of scripture, writer of scripture, we're, we're, we're shown by him that we have a role to play in this process. We're directed to see that we have a choice to make. We can either order our private world or we can choose to neglect it. We can choose. We can choose. We are not powerless. I, test you on it, I'm not powerless right now. I may feel exhausted, I may look exhausted, I may feel burnt out, I may feel confused. I, those are all valid things. They're feelings, they're pointing me to something that is out of kilter that I need to pay attention to. But I'm not powerless. I have a choice right now to make. I can choose to pay attention to the part of me that's most important, my inner world, my mind, my heart, my soul. Or... I can neglect it and become conformed to what's happening in my external public world. But I have a choice. I have a choice to make. 
And the truth is, so do you. So do you. And so as we end off this morning, I want you to write down these two questions to take into the rest of this week, to think about, to meditate on. I want, I want you to encourage you, ask the Holy Spirit, what does wisdom mean for me? What does it look like for me? And how, what are you saying to my world? This is all good for Tess, you know, she's going somewhere with this, go her. But what does it mean for me? I want you to ask yourself the question, where do you need to build up resources to be able to withstand the steadily mounting pressure of the world around you? What resources do you need to build upon internally? internally so that you do not succumb to the pressure around you and then i want you to think of someone who you feel is a good model of inner orderliness i want you to go and ask them a question what is one thing that you do to live with that kind of order and peace within yourself go and ask them and honor them honor them for a life that they've chose to live in a certain way it's an amazing thing and so those are the two things I want you to think about. And then I want to end off and I want to read you uh, this quote. It's from Rolf Waldo Emerson. It says, it's easy in the world, he wrote, to live after the world's opinion. It is easy in solitude to live after our own. But the great man is he who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude that ability to be strong and secure in your inner world so that you are not swayed by the opinions of yourself and the, conf and the, the opinions of your outer world. Because the reality is we can deceive ourselves to think that it's all good. We can do that. But we've got to tap into that innermost part of us and ask ourselves the hard questions so that we can build up a reserve so that in times to come, if we need to draw from deep wells, we have something to draw from. And then just like, this just really arrested my heart. I have to share it with you because I would be, it would be a miss of me not to share these things with you. But um, as just before I was on tea with Tess, I found this quote. I was scrolling through Instagram because you know that's what you do <laughs> when you have all the time in the world. Is, um, and I came across this quote from Brene Brown. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. And now the reality is, I have goals. I do, ambitious ones. But in this season, I have fallen to the level of my systems. My internal systems are not healthy. Some of the practices that I have are, are causing me to inhibit a deposit into the de deepest, most inner part of me. And the reality is, I haven't achieved certain things this year, or I haven't, I haven't walked into things that I've wanted to, not because they were not possible, but because I have had, I've had to face the hard truth that I've fallen to the level of my systems. And that's a hard thing to face, and it, it does make me emotional, because I realize that this is life. This is what it means to fail and move forward and to take stock and to, to grow. But the truth is, I have a choice to make. And the truth is, you have a choice to make. And we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can do these hard and holy things and take care of the part of us that's most important. And so I want to encourage you to build systems within your life that look after your internal private world because that is what will make you strong and formidable in seasons that are raging around you Alrighty, my girls i'm going to pray for you and then i'm going to send you on your merry way to go and ask some questions and to think to think about what this means for you i thank you jesus that you are you're so present. I thank you that we are marked by your presence, that it may not feel like that and it sometimes may seem un unlikely perhaps that you are even in the room, but the truth tells me that I'm marked by your presence 
And the truth tells me that every girl watching this morning is marked by your presence. And so you go with us. And so in this season, I just want to thank you that you go ahead, that you give us wisdom, you give us clarity, you give us tools. But more so, more than anything else, you give us the power of your spirit to lead us through. And I'm just so grateful for that. And so I want to pray that you would begin to speak to every woman this morning, begin to bring things to the table, begin to highlight perhaps internal systems and strategies that are failing them, empower them for change. I thank you that you give us the power of choice. It is such a gift. And so today as a group of women, we just put our hands up to say we choose. We choose the process of ordering our private world. So would you lead us? Would you take us further? Would you take us deeper? Would you help us to build up a reserve? And so I just want to, I just want to honor you, God, because without you, I don't know, I don't know what we'd do. <laughs> and there's a song I'm listening to at the moment, girls. I'd love you to go listen to it. It's so beautiful. It's called We Surrender. It's by Hillsong. I'm gonna, I'll share it on my Facebook um, and my Instagram story. You can go and listen to it. It's called We Surrender. And um, it talks about when we bring everything back to him, when we yield, it's in that place that he begins to restore and redeem. And so this moment, Jesus is us choosing to re-surrender that which is most important to you, and that is our hearts. And so we do that. And we yield. I just, I, I yield myself to you to your careful, caring hands. And I pray a blessing on every single woman. And will you bless them and keep them and smile upon them because you love them. Amen. Amen, beautiful ones. I love you. And I'm going to share the song and I'm going to be praying for you because I am eternally grateful for this community. You make me a better human. You have taught me how to show up and you have blessed my heart in more ways than you would ever know. Alrighty. See you next week and look out for that song. Bye.